guys, it's Nicole and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing a repot of the Phalaenopsis LD's Bear King RH3. I thought it'd be fun to show you my original repotting of this orchid and uh, show you how it's grown because it has gone bonkers this year. And I really love this orchid because it's got very pretty orange blooms and they're very fragrant. It was in bloom pretty much half of last year. It started blooming in April and it stopped blooming in November and it just blooms sequentially the entire time. I really love this orchid and I hope you guys enjoy uh, watching the original repot and I'm gonna be repotting it the same exact way. So my thought here is that I'll show you how the grow method worked out after it was in the setup for a year and a half and it can kind of give you some ideas as to how you guys can pot up your fowls and what you can expect. And also there were a couple of things that I've learned along the way. So I got this orchid originally from Hauserman Orchids. It was in really good shape. It was really, really healthy. It was in a nursery sleeve, which is very common for Phalaenopsis type orchids where it was in very, very tightly packed sphagnum moss. So what I did was I cleaned it out the roots looked to be in pretty good shape, so I was dealing with an orchid that was already healthy. If you guys haven't uh, bought from Hauserman Orchids, I highly recommend them. They have really nice uh, novelty fowls every now and then. So what I did was I potted this orchid up into a very fluffy uh, sphagnum moss, which is my favorite way of doing things because not only are you providing moisture to this orchid, you're also giving plenty of air. So in my last video, if you saw, you noticed that I kept everything really, really nice and fluffy. And I just find that in my environment, Phalaenopsis orchids really, really love it. Now I'm potting this orchid up into a five inch uh, repot me slotted pot. This is a decision that I regretted later, which you guys will see why. But um, you'll see that I fluffed the strands up. I hydrated the moss. I squeezed out excess moisture and then I just fluffed it up into that container to the left so that when I potted it up into this five inch pot, everything was nice and ready to go. I was very careful and gently putting everything in almost strand by strand, but I didn't go that crazy. Um, but I knew that this orchid would really like the setup and ultimately... Um, I think it just worked out really, really well. Now this orchid was not blooming when I first got it, but as you could see through the pot, everything is not packed down. It's nice and airy. And um, I did add a little wick on the bottom to add some self-watering to this because in my environment in the summer, things dry out really, really fast. So if I go away on vacation or something like that, I could leave like maybe an inch or two of water in the water reservoir and I know that it'll soak it up. Now that's something that I never do in the winter. I only do that when the temperatures are above 90. I don't air condition my grow space so things do get really, really hot. Well, the only thing I did with this is I topped it off with some bark to avoid the algae on the very top but let's take a look at what it looks like right now. So a full year and a half later, this orchid has grown really well. It's pushed out about four different flower spikes which have bloomed already for the season. And now we're gonna repot it to get it ready for this season. Um, it's grown a couple of new leaves, but the most impressive part of growing this orchid and this grow method is the root system. So, I had to repot this orchid because it's just grown through every single groove at the bottom of this pot and even through every single slot. So from the nursery pot to now, this orchid has just grown tremendously. And as I am looking at the pot, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just baffled and I don't know how I'm going to get this out, but the only option really is to cut the pot. If you try to take the orchid out with roots that are poking under, you're going to set your orchid back and you're going to get less blooms. Um, so instead of forcing the orchid out with breaking all those roots, we're going to spend an hour here, which I fast forwarded to spare you some of the uh, time to free this. Um, and we're going to cut around the pot. So 
I don't like the repot me slotted pots just because a lot of my phalaenopsis and cattleyas, they grow roots through every single slit. And then every time I need to repot, I have to do the same thing. So what I generally do is I take a sharp pair of uh, scissors or cutting tools and I cut through half of the pot by going through every single slot. And then once I cut through every single slot across, I go from the top and remove the first half of the orchid. Now this is very tedious, but it's worth it just because when you leave the roots as uh, intact as possible, you're going to get an even better uh, blooming show next year and you're not going to be setting your orchid back that much. Repotting can be traumatic for the orchid because inevitably you might bruise some roots or there might be some roots that will break, but that's not avoidable. But as if you can disturb the root system as little as possible, you're going to do really well with your orchid. So apologies for the light. I just moved to a location where you could see the roots a little bit better. But as you can see, we've got so many roots here. It's pretty much swallowed up that moss. I'll say that the moss wasn't smelly or anything like that. This has been in this pot a year and a half. Sphagnum moss, as I've mentioned in the past, tends to break down after about a year, but it really depends on the quality of the moss. This is the Best Grow brand, which is uh, New Zealand sphagnum moss, which I find pretty good. And despite watering this orchid maybe twice a week, it has not uh, truly broken down to the point that it stinks or anything like that, but it's likely uh, turning a little bit more acidic. So it's a good idea to uh, get this out of this pot and give it some fresh moss. So these look like, uh, I guess, green zucchini noodles. There's just so many roots. They look really healthy, but you know, when I cut this pot, it's just, especially when I get to the bottom, it's really difficult to remove. So when I get to the bottom, what I do is I cut every single individual um, slot at the bottom, which is very tedious since there's so many. And then piece by piece, I start removing the plastic. Now you might want to have some goggles or something like that, because at some point, once you get to little pieces, they start flying all over the place. So just be careful when you're doing this. But when I'm cutting through the slits, I'm trying to angle my cutting shears away from the roots and towards me so that I'm not cutting into root. So I sort of put pressure outside of the pot. This took me a while, so let's fast forward a little bit while I get that plastic off. There we go. So this is the root ball a year and a half after growing this orchid into a fluffy moss. So as you could see, the roots pretty much swallowed up the moss. <laughs> I just I just can't believe it when I see these things. Um, it was just one year and a half of growth. Um, it grew really nice for me. And I'm very excited to see how this is going to do. Um, clearly the setup worked for this orchid. So I'm going to stick with that for this orchid and the rest of my summer bloomers. But I'm going to make an adjustment, which you'll see at the end. So what I'm doing is I'm being very careful in loosening up that root ball. I did soak this orchid for about an hour before I started working with it, which is why the roots are so green. So I just filled up the pot. It was in a repot me slotted pot, but I had it in a five inch decorative pot without drainage holes. So I filled that up all the way to the top because I knew that these roots were gonna be out of control and I wanted them to be as pliable as possible. So I'm just digging my finger inside, being careful of any new root tips or anything like that. And I'm gently removing the pieces of moss. Soaking certainly helps and it makes sure that the roots can bend a little bit more as opposed to breaking. So I'm just trying to do my best to be careful. The hardest part is removing the pot, but when you have uh, roots that are stuck together like that, it can take a while to free everything. So I've removed the majority of the moss. Um, the harder part is to get into the middle of that root ball. And some of these roots really stuck together. So I want to unravel them to give them a little bit more breathing room and air. And then what I'm doing here is I'm trying to feel for any roots that feel hollow 
or that have dried out and I'm going to cut them off. You'll see that most of these roots have survived um, and they've done really well. So I don't have to cut off too much. I'd say that 95% of the 90 to 95% of the roots are alive in this orchid, but I'm just trimming off anything that's a little squishy. Now, again, I'm just trying to separate the roots a little bit. I'm not trying to force anything here because I don't want to break the roots, but when I repot, I want that root ball to just open up so that it doesn't grow without air. So anytime you're repotting orchids or anything like that, the biggest factor in making sure that it's successful compared to house plants is making sure that there's plenty of air between the roots. So that's why I open up that root ball. If you were potting up in LECA or organic or anything like that, the concept is the same. You need air for those roots in order for the orchid to breathe. And I think that's the biggest um, misnomer with folks that grow plants and they think that growing orchids is hard. It's really just the air and the potting media that they need to get right. And then they could figure out the light requirements and everything like that. But it all starts with the uh, potting media. So I got this little six inch pot and this obviously did not work out really well. Um, the orchid was just too tall. So here's another uh, six inch pot that I thought I'd use. This was um, with one of my Cattleya orchids. So I thought that would work out, but the root ball was just way too big. So I just brought out a couple of pots to see what would work, what wouldn't work, and I just adjusted accordingly. So as I'm putting the root ball into this uh, larger pot, it's just not going to work out. Um, so I, I opted to choose an even larger pot. Um, this is one of my larger uh, novelty Phalaenopsis orchids. So I got a pot that was closer to seven inches. This is six and a half or seven inches. So I ended up going with this. Now it has drainage holes on the bottom. I put moss on the bottom, but I'm doing something a little bit different because this is a larger pot and I'm gonna use some coconut husk. The reason for adding coconut husk this time is because whenever you have an orchid in a larger pot, it's gonna take longer for that pot to dry out. So I'm adding husk. You could also add bark or something like that just to give a little bit more air because I don't want that moss to get too soppy or too wet. Now, it's not going to get extremely soppy or wet because we're going to keep with making it nice and fluffy. But I figured adding a little bit of husk will add a little bit of air. And that's more important the larger the pot is. The smaller the pot is, the quicker it's going to dry out. The larger the pot is, the longer it'll take to dry out. So when people ask, like, how often do you water for Phalaenopsis types? Like this one, this is a summer blooming fowl. They like to stay nice and moist. But a pot like this one, it might be okay for a full week just because it's so large. You'll see that I am potting this up with a mixture of coconut husk and sphagnum moss, and I'm gently putting it inside. I aimed for a ratio of about 50-50, and coconut husk is actually quite moisture retentive, which is nice. This is an, a mix from Repot Me, so it has a little bit of perlite and some charcoal, um, and I think this is gonna work really well. So this will both retain moisture, but provide even more air than the last setup, just because we've got chunks of that husk in there. You'll see that I'm alternating with the sphagnum moss and the husk. That way we have air, then we have the moisture retentive sphagnum. Now you could probably get away with using um, just sphagnum moss, keeping it fluffy, just like I repotted last time, but Again, I just figured, let me add a little bit more air to this pot because it's larger. And you always wanna keep that in mind. The larger the pot you have, the more water it's gonna hold. And you never want your orchid to be extremely wet. You want it to be moist. You want good drainage, yet you wanna have the right materials that'll hold an optimum uh, moisture level for your orchid. Let me know down in the comments if that was clear and that makes sense. But I find that just keeping that in mind, um, regardless of the material that you use, you'll have success if you figure out 
whatever is moisture retentive enough uh, with the specific pot size and that you have enough air, you'll be able to make things work really well for your Phalaenopsis orchids. I do have some uh, repot me slotted pots left over. Um, I'm only going to use them in an emergency. As you could see from uh, when we had to cut the pot open, the roots just went crazy on this one. So I want to avoid using those pots just because, again, I find for my Cattleya orchids and my Phalaenopsis orchids, they just outgrow their pots very quickly. I think it's a mixture of the good light that they get, the potting media that they're in, and also um, the feeding that they get. I use MSU fertilizer for all of my orchids. And for Phalaenopsis types, I do add in a little bit of slow-release fertilizer every now and then. And during the growth season, I feed them at a rate of 300 parts per million. So they do tend to do very well. And I just think that in using regular pots like this one, I won't have to go through the headache of having to cut through a pot again. So I'm adding a couple of beads of uh, slow release fertilizer, Phalaenopsis type orchids do tend to be heavy feeders. I find that for Vanda orchids, Phalaenopsis orchids, they're heavier feeders than like a Cattleya or a Dendrobium. Um, they do tend to uh, grow pretty large structures, as you can see from the leaf size and the roots. So I'm just adding it towards the very top, and I'm adding a little bit of husk on the very top as well. And um, this orchid, I think, is going to be in good shape for another grow season. Now I'm hoping to get more blooms and spikes on this one. At any given point, it would have between two and three flowers when it was in bloom last year, and it bloomed for six months. So I would love to start seeing some buds develop. It's taken a break for a couple of months, just given that it's a summer bloomer, that's totally normal. But once buds start coming in, it will just bloom nonstop. And you'll notice that I did not cut off any of those flower spikes, and that is because it is a sequential bloomer. We don't want to cut those off because when it's ready to bloom again, not only will it push out uh, new flower spikes, but it'll bloom from those old flower spikes. And the better you treat your orchid, the better um, you repot them, and the more gentle you are with those roots, every single year you're going to get a better and better show and get more and more blooms. This is one of my favorites. If you guys don't have any summer blooming fowls, I highly recommend them. This is a really, really nice one. They do tend to be quite fragrant. They do like their conditions pretty warm to hot. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. And they do like to stay moist. Otherwise, I'm really happy with um, how this repot came out. In all, it took me about an hour, but I think it was totally worth it. I probably won't be repotting this orchid for well over a year at this point, and um, I'm really looking forward to those blooms. Well, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more orchid content. Thanks, everyone. Bye.